So I've got a European 300 GD that I've been looking after at my home, but it's going into storage and I thought I'd change the coolant. Now most of the 123 300 coolant change videos don't show all the drainage sites, including the heater tap, heater box hoses, which I was going to drain as well. Um, also, they don't often include the block drainage, which I'll illustrate where that is as well. And then finally, the simpler one, of the radiator drain, but this is blocked by the skid plate in the G-Wagon and I was going to take that off. So changing the coolant so it's not rusting away the radiator. So this is a European left-hand drive vehicle which I've been storing for a couple of years. Um, there's no coolant reservoir compared to a 123 and this car is not specced with aircon which could get in the way. And so the difficulty we have for most of the drainage which is with the radiator, you have the skid plate at the bottom of the G for your off-roading. Now this is secured by six 17 millimeter bolts, uh, three on each side, and is actually the bolt is on the internal side and the nut is on the external side, and you need to secure both. Initially you can just sort of unbreak them by getting the nut undone, but then you need to get the spanner on the internal side. So you can understand how with the skid plate you can't drain that without making an almighty mess and that's why it needs to come off. So the 17 is going to go on. I'm just going to um, break it, so to speak, to start with. And then we're going to get the spanner on the other side to undo these. And you can see how the nut sits on the other side. The bottom two are quite easy to access. It's the upper one, which is a bit of a nuisance with a bumper on. So um, you can see how the nut just comes out. The bolt comes out, I'm sorry. Not a big deal. It's a solid piece of metal and we're on our way. So although the recovery hook sort of stops it falling off, I'll put some jack stands at the back to at least take some of the weight if it comes toppling down, which it doesn't really do because of the recovery point. So the upper two are kind of annoying because you've got to get your spanner in there and depending on your bumper or your headlight situation, this one's a bit awkward, but after I've got them off, off it comes, it probably weighs about three or four kilos um, and then just gently putting that aside. Now you can see here access to the radiators available, there's the mounts, and there's our drainage bolt, which is I think 19 millimeters. And so we're going to undo the cap here. And you can see the coolant's not looking too flash, it's a little bit low. Uh, the car's only turned over, it's not been driven in a little while. So here we go, um, just undoing the radiator drainage, having your bucket available, because you're going to get out about anywhere from five plus liters here. So you always make a little bit of mess. And that was the sound of success. So it was the blue coolant in here, even though it looked a bit murky from the top. Now the next one is actually the block drainage point, another 90 millimeter bolt on the side of the right engine. So just unbreaking that one. Now this one's really awkward. I would be interested to hear how you're supposed to drain this without making a mess. Um, in reality, I think you just have to wear it. So taking this out by finger and then I'm just blocking it there while my son checked the position of the buckets because that's about the best you're gonna do. The other thing you can do is you can pop a plastic bag at the top there and that did catch about a liter and a half, which is better than being on your floor. So that's what we did here. And in a sec, you'll see how much that actually caught. And these drainage areas often leave a lot of coolant in there. People forget to do them. They just think draining the radiator is adequate. So I've just put the bolt back in. Nothing worse than pouring it back into here and flushing out because you've forgotten. So there's the coolant that came out from just a collection bag. That's a solid bag. And for the final bit, I need to use the garden hose. And because I've got no coolant, I don't want to turn the car over. So I just tow that out. Well, my own for old 460's first use in a little while. And then we're going to look at the heater box hoses. So you've got an inlet there coming off the heater tap and the outlet coming down here into that metal pipe down into the uh, water pump region. And, and to enable this, you want to have that heater control in the heat option because that'll open the tap and that'll allow the fluid to come through. So I'm just sliding it over in the old school 460 technique. So just taking off the hose clamps 
not much actually came out of these and I don't know if it's because the car's not been doing much in quite a while or uh, perhaps there's only a very small volume in there but I want to flush this out anyway so I'm going to take these off and then attach the garden hose just to flush it out and I appreciate that's just some that'll be some ionized water that's in the heater box but it'll be insignificant and it's probably better than having the old coolant mixing with the new coolant so just getting another one of my kids to help turn on the hose just flushing that out and on go the clamps again on go the hoses which are in nice condition and then we're about ready to fill up so we actually drained about oh, i'd say nine or ten liters out some of that's from that hose water so i'll take that over to the chemical waste plant and here's our vico coolant which I believe is the factory spec and so it's a bit like Die Hard 3 where you got to mix up all the volumes of fluid in various bucket sizes so I'm just getting the deionized water which I've just got from the supermarket uh, for a few dollars and I'm gonna mix that 50 50 with the coolant and I've got to do this a couple of times because uh, I'm gonna put it into that 10 liter bucket which is about the volume I should be replacing so there's the first Four litres of distilled water mixed with the first four litres of concentrate coolant. And then I'll just add another couple of litres to this. And knowing that's 10 litres in that container, I expect to get most of this in. Now, without a reservoir in this setup, you'll see the coolant bubbling out of the radiator. So it's time to have a look. Now, that will continue to drain. Um, it's got to get taken up in the heater box or the lines and in the block. So let that go through and then top it up. So it's now time to probably run the engine after this just to circulate it through, having got about six litres in there already. Just checking it's not leaking. And and then after that, just topping up the final bit, uh, going for a drive and doing any final top-ups, and that is it.